Hello everyone, my name is Josh from Videos by Josh, and today I want to talk about a new camera that Sony's announced that's kind of flown under the radar. This is the Sony ILX-LR1, and it's an industrial cinema camera designed for small form factor applications. The camera was confirmed to be releasing on September 5th, 2023, and ultimately it's like nothing I've really ever seen from Sony. It kind of reminds me of the older Sigma FP style cinema cameras, just an incredibly powerful tool in a very small form factor. The sensor on this camera is very impressive, and it's an absolute behemoth and powerhouse of a sensor at that. It's very similar, if not identical, to the sensor in the A7R5 camera, a 61 megapixel high resolution 35 millimeter full frame sensor that's going to be great at photos. This is an incredibly high resolution camera for almost no space invested. This thing is tiny, and apparently it's just as lightweight and compact as the pictures make it out to be. Physically, the camera measures 4 inches by 3 inches, which is just, it's palm-sized. It's absolutely tiny, but it also appears to come with a full-fledged E-mount that takes up almost the entirety of the front of the camera. This is an absolutely wonky proportioned unit that I don't think we really could have envisioned uh, in the early years of the E-mount. Like, because of the camera's form factor and its desired operation, you're eliminating a lot of lenses right off the bat. Like any any zoom lens or any heavy restrictive lens is going to be dis is going to be hard for you to mount on like in a drone application. Uh, I think a lot of the popularity is going to go to the pancake lenses in the Sony system. Maybe the 20 millimeter uh, 1.8 could be a popular choice. But in terms of lenses, I'm thinking small, light, flat, and potentially wide angle will be popular with this camera. This is an absolutely unique camera that I think is going to be really interesting to see. Reportedly, it also weighs only 8.6 ounces, so very light. And that's going to be important when it comes to this camera's designed main use case. Sony claims that this camera was designed for industrial use with a heavy assertion that people are going to be using it in drone photography. And I can certainly see that application. Small cameras like this work wonders on camera drones and cine lifts. And until now, I don't believe Sony really had anything viable in that market other than existing small form factor cameras, which well, when compared to traditional drone mounted cameras like GoPros were quite heavy and cumbersome. And to compete with companies like DJI who have their own drone mounted cameras, mostly built into their drones, but have their own systems, this is could be a competitive offering if it's well executed. The release later goes on to state that the camera is expected to capture high resolution, low noise, and wide dynamic range images with a shooting capability of three frames per second. And because of its focus for industrial applications and drone work, you are going to give up a lot on this camera as well. There's no monitor or viewfinder. Sony claims that because of the camera's build, it can be used on a variety of job sites for a variety of different purposes, anything from land management to surveying to classic drone photography. It's a classic box-shaped camera, and it has some mounting holes for you to screw into your desired kit, drone, or robot, uh, whatever suitable location uh, that you'd be looking for. It can be mounted on any of its six sides, and the back appears to have USB-C and micro HDMI, not a huge fan of that, but micro HDMI, to uh, install the camera into your desired installation. Working off the promotional images, it's hard to see if there is a swappable battery in this camera. I assume there's not. I assume that you actually have to plug this into power, or if there is an onboard battery, something that needs to be charged. That is a big divergence from Sony's traditional offerings on the E-mount system. What's really interesting is that Sony's pushing their remote SDK to give users access to the camera's controls and menus from their software application. Through the integration of API, it becomes possible to remote control the camera from whatever system that you're using to control your greater machine. So Sony is assuming that you'll be changing your camera settings, shutter release, live view monitoring, and all the other settings involved with this camera remotely, which is going to be a big deal for where this camera is being intended to operate. There's also a lock switch on the camera to prevent unintended operator errors caused by clicking the buttons or colliding with them on the rear side. For example, if you're mounting the camera with a rear plate and the plate is rubbing up against those buttons. One thing to be aware of about this new camera is that it lacks in-body image stabilization, which can be handy working on drones and other industrial applications. Now, Sony claims that its absence saves weight and the size of the camera, making it easier to use and mount in these applications. And I assume you'll also have Catalyst Browse to help you stabilize your footage, but that could be a concern if you're looking to get incredibly smooth footage. It's reported that the power and control terminal inside the camera offers low latency data communication for remote applications that require an instant response. 
Say if you're controlling a drone via the camera feed of this camera, you want to know exactly what the camera is seeing at every particular moment. Uh, and the camera also supports DC power and can be connected directly to a drone or a machine's battery. Now, certainly if you're interested in this camera from a video perspective, you're going to be taking a step back from Sony's more modern offerings. According to the spec sheet on B&H, the camera will shoot at 4K60 using H.265 or H.264 encoding, but only at 8-bit. So we're back to the more restrictive bit depth for color grading, which uh, personally coming from the A7 III days, I was happy to leave behind and give up for 10-bit. It certainly isn't giving you the latitude that you would expect from some more expensive integrated camera drones. You also get two-channel audio recording, which is interesting. A lot of cameras that are mounted on drones or industrial applications are just focused on the visual. So the fact that you can pull in audio into this camera makes it interesting. It's reported that the camera will offer S-Log3 and S-Cinetone profiles. It's interesting that that's being advertised for this camera because with an 8-bit codec, you're going to struggle, I think, a lot of the times to accurately grade S-Log3. However, uh, it, it could surprise me. This is a modern Sony camera, and they've definitely designed a lot of really good, really interesting cameras as a late so perhaps there's some trickery going on to make that work a bit better in this application it's really interesting to see sony position a camera for drone use especially knowing that companies like dji are so dominant and so monopolistic in the market um like in terms of custom built drones i could see this being a, a hard-hitting competitor to battle against some of gopro's market share for for drone mounted cameras um i i really like some of dji's offerings in the inspire and the Mavic, I don't necessarily see this being a replacement for that. But, you know, if, if we're honest with ourselves, beyond drone photography, who couldn't use like a tiny, incredibly high performance full frame camera in their life? Like a lot of the areas where GoPro shines, I think this camera is also going to shine. And if they can really carve out a niche in the drone space for this camera, all the better. I, I would be happy to see that in Sony expanding their market share into another aspect of video and photography. Now, kind of wrapping up, I think the thing that's going to surprise a lot of people is the price of this camera. This camera is not necessarily representative of taking an FX3 or an A7S3 or, or what have you and, and cutting it in half, essentially cutting the price in half. That's really not what's happening here. Reportedly, the price is supposed to be coming out at $29.50 USD or just over 4000 Canadian dollars for this, what do we even call this, micro camera for this, for this industrial drone camera. Certainly, it fits a gap somewhere. Someone's going to want this camera. I assume a lot of people are going to want this camera, if not to try, then to actually use in an, in an industrial application. But from an average videographer's point of view, um, the price almost entirely rules it out for my own professional work. And there are a slew of other cameras, even from Sony themselves, that would be a better value and fit better in my workflow than this new camera. Some more takeaways I have about this is that it's clear that Sony is marketing this is selling it to retailers as a specialty camera this is this is a specialty camera for a special type of consumer like a business consumer that needs a specific form factor this is a very specialty tool and a lot of people are just going to look past this a lot of people aren't maybe even going to learn about this camera but i think it's interesting because for whatever reason sony apparently can't stop making cameras. They just keep coming out with cameras and cameras and cameras. I remember a time when we were all waiting for the A7S 3 and we were like, come on, when is it coming out? And it eventually did come out and now it's followed by a slew of cameras that I assume someone asked for. I, I certainly didn't, but I'm, I'm glad to see these new cameras uh, coming out. Overall, I'm happy to see Sony continue making interesting cameras.